out there to be here to learn about peace. And the nice thing about today was not just a local, but it was global, and it was also a lot about recycling and taking care of the world. And so the notion that we can do some things in changing our lifestyle that will help create more possibilities for peacefulness. Well, I think, you know, that the whole reason for the whole reason for having this at a campus is that college and education is supposed to be about something and for something. And so it's not just to learn a skill or to learn a topic or study geography, but it's to learn about the things that are happening in the world and the role we play and then the notion that we can use those skills to be part of a solution rather than to continue to be part of the problem. My name is David Smith, I'm from the U.S. Institute of Peace in Washington, and this has been a fantastic conference. I was invited to speak about peace building and the future of peace building, and I'm so glad that I was invited. Uh, Fran is a dear friend who I've worked with for several years in the peace community. Uh, I am impressed with the array of uh, individuals and organizations that are here. And, and really it's heartening to realize that Golden West College is putting so much effort in something like this. So it's been a fantastic day. I, you know, I think that sometimes slideshows and talks get one part. But art touches the heart, and it opens up the senses, and it reminds us uh, that people that that whole notion of expression, and and we can see something visually that maybe we didn't see if we were just listening to somebody talk. I think after thinking, you have to go to action, and I think if if everybody here thinks about what they do tomorrow. Often when I talk to people about peace, I say, okay, you're here today, what are you gonna do Monday morning that's different? How are you gonna put into action what you've learned here today? And hopefully people are leaving with that sense of, Monday morning I can write a letter to the newspaper, Monday morning I can call my congressman, Monday morning I can go volunteer. All these things that I can do, that's how you're gonna change the world. You can do small things in big ways. And I think this conference can send people in that direction. Well, prevention is a little tough living in this world where things inevitably happen. And, you know, if it's not from violence, we still can get traumatized from natural disasters. So, kind of having a a common understanding of what trauma is and how it impacts us and how to respond would be the best prevention because we're never going to prevent all trauma. It's, it's part of being human to be traumatized. It's a universal experience. And prevention would be that we understand it so when it hits, we're ready to know what to do rather than ignoring it until it becomes a long-term problem. We're trying to integrate this theme into classes, into clubs, into this kind of an event today, um, into coursework. We have the first peace studies program of any community college, and, and it relates to other peace uh, programs at other universities. And so it is part of a specific program, but it also fits into other classes as well. This is the last, uh, one of the last technique I have. This is the um, woman uh, pray in the sun uh, and put the mask behind and try to 
uh, find new life. The U.S. Institute of Peace is an independent entity established by the United States Congress in 1984. Okay. We are funded by Congress and we focus on international conflict resolution and peace building. We work in zones of conflict, the most violent, the most intractable conflicts around the world to try to bring peace to those communities. tell someone, well, why can't you be more compassionate? What good does that do? Not a lot of good. I mean, you have to look at what's blocking the compassion and seek to address that, right? So those who have the capacity to feel compassion, we can support each other in trying to expand the need to be more compassionate. But some people don't have access to that, and they're going to need more help in really uncovering what their wounds are. That work that we do isn't prevention. We really feel that prevention is the key. And I think prevention really, the importance of prevention is obvious, that if you can prevent violent conflict, you can save lives, you can save resources, all the things that you can save. I think the key to prevention is really understanding what's going on inside of a conflict and understanding how the, the consequences could go really bad at times. So we should all be focusing more on prevention. It's really wonderful to see a peace conference in Orange County and I really commend Fran for having done this for so many years. It's my first chance to come today so um, I'm just really, really glad that she keeps doing this and that I got to be a part of it. It's a great experience. the art you see around us, we really wanted to, to emphasize how art can play a very meaningful role in, in culture as well. This was some of the part I did for the piece. This is the uh, Few children around the world that are worried for the world and the peace. And the peace has blood. And uh, is it the visions of the children to have better uh, world in the future. You know, it's just a wonderful opportunity for people to come together, even if even if they don't, uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, study peace or uh, work for some of the organizations here. It's just a great opportunity for people to come together and learn. Uh, I'm clear that you know you, you can't walk in the door here uh, and spend some time here and not walk out having learned some very valuable things or had some sort of an aha moment for yourself. I know I did today. Uh, the speakers are fantastic. Uh, there's just an energy in the room that is contagious. So it's just a, you know, it's just a wonderful opportunity to come together with some like-minded people and uh, you know get involved in the conversation about about peace and what can we do individually to contribute because there's so many ways that we can contribute. Well, a big part of what I do, I spent 15 years researching health nutrition, and uh, what I've learned is. It's important what you eat, obviously, but also cosmetic products and things you put on the body, what you put in the mind. But how we choose to live our lifestyle has a big impact on the earth. You know, frankly, a lot of people don't think they can make a difference. You know? We watch what's happening on CNN and we kind of stay up with what's happening, but uh, we don't jump in anymore. We don't, uh, we don't get active about it, and there's a million ways that you can participate, even if it's just to be aware of what's happening and acknowledge what's happening and, and being involved in a conversation that, that uh, effectively says, you know, I support what, what's going on, you know, if what's going on is an uprising of people who, who are frankly saying enough is enough, you know, we, we, want, uh, we want our rights, we want to be treated with dignity. Um, 
So, so even just to find a way to support that, you know, from afar in whatever way it occurs to us, I think is important. It's very hard to communicate with people when you're not in a peaceful mental emotional state. This one is called Take Me Away. And it's like calling the angels and saying I want to be free. And no matter what's going on in life, it's like a freedom. You know, I think it's just, you know, for, for individuals, it's just deciding I want to make a difference. And then that opens up the space to figure out how to go about doing that. And uh, this is a series of books that I'm doing right now. So it's a chapter of one of my books right now. Uh, my name is Turaj, and I'm a glass artist. I'm doing a glass work and glass fusing, and I'm here to promote peace because the peace is the most important thing to me. I believe in peace, and I'm inspired by peace. Being around people that believe in peace, they create a space that uh, is uh, very safe to live and uh, it's very inspiring. East meet West. So because of that is a time after, you know, we have to get the, uh, all the cultural thing and all the good thing to uh, share, you know, with the East between, between West and West with this East. Back home during my leisure time, actually, as I do these things, I'm, I get inspired by studies that I do with the Rumi. Because Artist by itself is peaceful, so because of that, all the artists they can promote peace. It is a wonderful thing that they can do. I think there is another way also to promote it. Is because when you do, for me, when I do art piece, I put my energy into it. Peace is just being uh, thoughtful, being, I mean, doing good thought, good deed, and good talk is a peace. Uh, the theme this year was uh, envisioning tw uh, peace in 21st century, uh, envisioning a better tomorrow uh, for, uh, and, and how it's going to play out in the 21st century, how, how peace will play out in 21st century. This conference was an amazing conference because the difference between this year and prior years was that there was just so much contribution to it. It was amazing that the, this, this year is everybody expected that because of a ch challenging time to we would offer less. And this was actually, it was overflowing. You know, we had um, all kinds of artwork to be, to, to be contributed to us. We had speakers from all over the country to, to come in and contribute to us that way. Every single um, speaker came to us or um, artists came here absolutely with no funding and uh, they just came here because of their commitment to peace. So right there it was the amount of contribution to us was, was amazing. Uh, and the art made a huge difference to it. This was a zero waste event. So this was the first event on, camp, on this campus to be a zero waste event. And so, and that was also contributed to us. Uh, people who had expertise in this field of uh, zero waste, they came here, they brought a rainbow company, they, uh, they brought bins, so uh, we would be able to uh, have it as a zero waste. We did not use anything that was not recyclable, or it was, you know, we didn't use anything that we didn't have any trash at the end of the day. had a 200 people capacity. We sold out and we had to go over it a little bit 205, you know, to, you know, and, and then we had to turn people away. So that right there tells me that people are interested. Um, yeah, the world might be in chaos, but I think people are also really looking for rethinking. This is an opportunity. I think people are really looking at it as an opportunity maybe for a different way of thinking altogether. So I think that, that that was also different from this year. Offering an alternative way of thinking altogether about peace, not just a peace that is going to be absence of war, but a peace that would start from inside to go outside and, 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 and caring for our environment, caring for one another, being compassionate, again, being peace as a point of being a just society, sustainable society, a compassionate society.
I think this is the best time to live, honestly, because no, no time before in, in the past, Middle East has seen such an uprising. I think it's a point that people, they don't want to take humiliation anymore. You know, they have been humiliated for so long. And I think they're just saying no to it. And I think this is, this is an exciting time to live. It's a vision altogether. It's all, it's all a vision. And if it existed, we didn't have to create it. But this is something that, that, that we need to imagine, build and create. This is not something, we, don't, we are not gonna get peace because we want it. We get it because we create it. Peace and service, they are actually interrelated. To be a peaceful person to begin with, we have to have that compassionate heart for other people. We have to use our education for service. The purpose of education is for service. our young generation to be leader in, 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 in service and the more service oriented person they will be the more responsibility they will take for the world well we have to get to work for next year right away we are, we are already asking our young generation to give us evaluation of what they saw today, what they liked, what they didn't like, or what they would like to expand upon, but they were what they would like us to do more next year. And we are asking them, actually every year we give them, uh, we give somebody a Peace of Studies award, and this year went to Invisible Children. So we are already asking them for next year, find out in the community who is a leader? Who is at service for, 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 uh, for the community? Who is at the service for the world? Who would you want? So we have already are asking them that those questions to start thinking about giving us a vision for next year.